Well, good morning, everybody. Matt Kalogli here with SRP Medical Marketing and um, coming to you today uh, from the office with the headset on. Uh, quite a few folks in the office today, believe it or not. Actually, pretty darn busy here today. Um, and uh, so I want to dive into today. We're going to, as people jump on, I'm going to talk to you specifically today about uh, uh, how to scale your medical practice. And there's, uh, I think you're going to find this fairly interesting. Um, I've been having quite a few conversations with owners over the last couple of weeks. And one of the big questions they ask on a regular basis is, you know, Matt, how do we get this thing to scale? You know, it's pretty easy to have one and make sure that everything is done right. Uh, but, you know, again, we took our practices from zero to three in 18 months, went from basically starting out with four staff members, which two of them, you know, one was the doctor, myself and my business partner, and then a front desk person. And we moved that all the way to having 40 plus employees, uh, three locations in three different cities and doing six and a half million dollars a year. So how do you get to that place of scale? And I'm having this conversation uh, quite a bit with quite a few people. Um, so we're gonna dive into that. It's I'm gonna show you how you can achieve a level of scale even if you are in survival mode right now. But before we get started, if you would like to talk to me specifically about your situation in your practice and how to move from that survival mode and move into that scalability mode where you can either open up multiple facilities or you just wanna make your facility so that you don't have to be there each and every single day, uh, that you can offload your work to PAs or nurse practitioners or maybe even another DO or doctor, then all you have to do is go to srpmedicalmarketing.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L, -L, that's srpmedicalmarketing.com forward slash call. And uh, we'll set up a 30 minute call where we can talk about how you can create scale in your business, even if you're struggling to make a little bit of payroll. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, so clients come to me for a, a variety of different reasons, but the, over, the overarching uh, reason, the real reason why they come to see me, because you know a lot of times they'll come to me saying, well, I, I wanna do this or I wanna do that, or I wanna sell more of this procedure, or I want to, um, you know, I, I want to, you know, I, I've got this new uh, laser, how do I sell the most of it? Or, you know, what's wrong with my Facebook ads? I mean, they, they come to me for a variety of different reasons. But really what they're telling me is, Matt, how the heck do I get off the treadmill? How do I get off the hamster wheel? And how in the world do I create scale so I don't have to be here each and every single day so I can go to Hawaii for a week? Okay. Well, even though they may have patients coming in and they may have great procedures, um, they're, they're frankly frustrated because they have to be there each and every single day. And they start to feel trapped. They start to feel, um, they start to feel like uh, everybody's making a buck in this thing except for them. Um, they feel like every time they turn around, they have another staff member who's asking for a raise or if a cousin can come in and get a discounted procedure or, uh, you know, the, they just, they feel like me a lot of times that they're the last ones to get paid, that they're not making the kind of money that they thought they were going to make. Um, and, and quite frankly, they're frustrated beyond belief. Um, so in, in what I tell them first and foremost, um, is, is your ability to reach scale. Okay. So it, let me back up a second. Here's what I want you to look at. Okay. So here we go. Here's my, this is my very expensive whiteboard. As you can see, it's blue. Okay, so if we want to move from survival, okay, so if we want to move from this survival stage, we have to then get to stability. And in order for us to reach scale, we have to have stability. Okay, so survival mode is, you know, we're not, we don't have enough money coming in, we're stressing out payroll, um, we're waiting to the last minute to pay each and every single bill because we want to make sure that we have enough money in the bank account. You really can't take any time off, uh, you really can't. You know, you, there's all these different things. There's all these different emotions that are going on, okay? And, and so to get out of the survival mode, what you need to do in order to get to stability is you need to be really clear about what makes you money. I'm going to write this down, okay? What makes you money? And when I say money, okay, I'm not talking revenue. I'm talking about money in your pocket, okay? What is profitable, because if your profit is going to support everybody else to go support your vendors, your landlord, your, uh, your accreditation, your website person, your social media person, your office manager, and you are the one that is left with very little at the end, 
you're, you're never going to get out of this survival mode. Okay. Where we want you to be is we want you to be at scale. And when you're at scale, you get time. Okay. So there's time right there. You get time. And what's cool about this, it's really cool when it happens and it can happen really, really fast. Okay. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't take years and years to get to that place. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a story specifically about this and I'll, it, it's actually my story. Um, but the, the, the thing about getting to scale is most people think that this is a real slog, right? You know, you got to do this for so long and then this for so long. And then five years later, you get to scale. That is not the case. We got to scale. We, we opened our first clinic in January, at the end of January, 2014. By November of that year, we opened our second one. And that clinic uh, in its first week was doing 30 plus thousand dollars a week and consistently did 30 plus thousand dollars a week. Okay. So, and then we opened up our third in June and that one in its first year did two and a half, over two plus million dollars in its first year. Okay. So we, you can get to scale very, very quickly. Okay. So what do you have to do first and foremost is you have to focus on what makes you money? What procedure, what procedure makes you money? What procedure or procedures make you the most amount of money? Most doctors that are in this space, they're doing regenerative medicine, they're doing aesthetics, they're doing P-shot, O-shot, vampire facelift, vampire breast lift, they're doing Botox, they're doing derma fillers. It's, 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 like, it's like they're at a Greek diner and the menu is 47 pages long, okay? That's not the way to profitability. That's not the way to scale, okay? That's too hard, it's too complex. In order for you to reach scale, you have to have simplicity. And I'm gonna talk about simplicity here in just a minute. Before I do that, if you would like to learn how you can get scale in your practice and go from surviving to scale in a very short amount of time, just go to srpmedicalmarketing.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L, that's srpmedicalmarketing.com forward slash call. On there, you can see my calendar. You can book an appointment on my calendar uh, and we'll talk for 30, 45 minutes. I'll talk to you specifically about your situation. Um, if you are if you are more inclined that you just want to message me to set up a time, if there's not available uh, available time, look just in private message me or message me below. Um, I'll put the, I'm actually gonna put the website below here. Okay. So if you would rather just set up a time directly with me because you don't see anything on my calendar, that's fine. I understand all you have to do is uh, just message me below or private message me on Facebook and I'll be more than happy to coordinate with you to set up a time or get my assistant to do it. Okay, so let's, let's go back to this whole issue of scale. Scale is not about having a complex business, okay? Scale is gonna come from simplicity. Very simple. Scale is going to come from simplicity. Let me explain. Most practices, like I said, they do hair restoration, regenerative medicine, they do uh, you know, hormone replacement therapy, they fix women, they fix men, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, when we opened up our clinics, we focused on one thing, and that was men's sexual health, okay? So we did erectile dysfunction, and we did hormone replacement therapy, and that was it. That's all we did. Now, over the years, what we did is we tried and we tested doing hair restoration, okay, because we were doing PRP and we figured what the heck, we'll do hair restoration. Well, what we found was a really interesting thing. So what we do is that every single time that we uh, would launch a new product, we would launch it to our existing client base first. So let's say the training for that new product or that new service, let's say that training and the machine and everything, let's say it was going to cost $25,000, just picking a number out of thin air. So what we did was we said, well, let's pre-sell it so that we can pay for it out of cash and not have to finance it. Okay. Well, we did that with the P-Shot and we did I don't know, 20 procedures in the first uh, seven days, something like that. Um, and then continually we're doing 40 PRP procedures per month per clinic. Okay, so that, that was a good fit. Utilizing P-Shot PRP to fix erectile dysfunction was huge. It was great, um, especially for those guys that didn't want to do Trimex. 
We then ordered, we then inserted into that as well. We started adding in hormone replacement therapy, specifically pellets. We had done shots, we had done creams, and just felt that pellets were getting a better result for our clients. And quite frankly, it was a set it and forget it. Okay, I'm not here to debate the efficacy of any one of those treatment protocols. Doctors, you all can do that in another place. Um, we just found that it worked best for our client base. Um, and we did the exact same thing. We pre-sold that. So we've had two big successes, right? We got a big list. We got like 10,000 names at least on our list. Uh, we got 5,000 patients that have paid us, Five, 6,000 patients that have paid us. I mean, we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, this time we had two clinics open. We said, okay, we're going to add hair restoration. That hair restoration is going to be the next big thing. So we go through the same thing. And we go ahead and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do hair restoration. It's a platelet rich, it's a PRP procedure using some growth factor. You know, we can put together a massive package and we'll do great with this. It, it, it didn't fail, but it didn't knock it out of the room home. It didn't knock it out of the park. I would call it a base hit that squibbed up the middle between the second baseman and shortstop. It was not, it wasn't overly impressive. And, and frankly, it didn't have any legs. It really didn't last. And here's what we discovered. and or hormone replacement therapy. That was it. That was that was all that mattered to them. And so what we did was we actually uh, took the hair business and we created a separate, completely separate clinic and set that off to the side, excuse me, set that off to the side so that we could focus and get scale on what we did best. And that was being able to help men perform better in the bedroom. And it was wildly successful. Everything that we ever did that moved us away from our core of who we are and the few things that we did really, really well were nothing more than distractions. And the more we doubled down on the thing that we did the best, and the more we pushed on the things that we did the best and became the best at that, the faster we were able to achieve scale. It was simple. Man can't perform in bedroom. Man comes seems, sees us. Man, man now can perform in bedroom. It was that simple. That was all it was. And it, it really just, um, it, it really drove home the point that scale is not going to come from complexity. Your scale of your practice, your ability to survive is not going to be about you adding another procedure. In fact, um, I will tell you right now, you probably should eliminate some procedures. If a procedure isn't a beachhead, meaning it leads them into the practice, which I'll talk about that at a later date, or it is not something that you can be excellent at doing and be the best in your one or two in your marketplace, then you probably shouldn't do it. If you have a bunch of procedures that you're doing and you do them occasionally and you just have them around, what it's probably going to be doing is it's probably going to be, um, it's, it's probably going to be uh, a distraction. Okay. You know, you, you don't want to have this massive toolbox where you have all these tools that most of them never get used. I want you to limit your toolbox. I want you to have a very few things, very few procedures and become the best at what you do in order for you to get scale. Now in the future, let's say you want to get really, let's say you have a hormone replacement therapy clinic and you focus with just women. That's great. And you want to help men? Well, then maybe you open up one that just focuses on men, um, which leads me to my last story. And that has to do with in our men's practice, whether or not we were ever going to treat women. Okay, because we knew that women had a lot of the same issues when they get to their 40, 40 plus with regards to hormones. And we consistently said no, because it was a completely different process. How you sell men is very different than how you sell women. Uh, men think very differently about sex than women do. Um, for men, it's all about uh, self-actualization. -actual uh, for women, it's generally about connection and procreation. Uh, obviously, our client base is outside of the procreation window, so it's really about connection. And so what we found was, again, if we were going to open up a female clinic, which we never moved forward with it, then it would make sense, even though we can make a lot of money, it would make sense at that time to just open up another practice that focused specifically on women that, you know, because our, our men's clinics, 
the, you know, they were, they were, they were like man caves, right? Dark hardwoods, mahoganies and leather chairs. I mean, you know, if I could have served bourbon and had a cigar room, I would have done it and put a pool table in, I would have done it in a heartbeat. Okay. So, so in kind of summary, the key for you to go from what we like to call, here we go, from the survival mode is, and to get to the stability mode and to get to scale, is I want you to focus on what is the thing that makes you the most money? And how do we do more of that? Okay. Now, if you want to schedule a one on one call with me directly to talk specifically about how to scale your practice um, and scale it quickly, and again, scale can be opening up multiple locations or it just could be having one really great rocking location that allows you to take a lot of time off, uh, just go to srpmedicalmarketing.com forward slash call, C A L L. That's SRP medicalmarketing.com forward slash call and be happy to talk to you about how you can move from surviving to stability and to scale and let's say you're already at scale for those of you that are already there with a couple of facilities uh, how do you move to significance okay so there you go um you have a great day if you are in the southeast like i am stay warm and stay dry it is pouring out there uh if wherever else is going on in the world but i am going to jump on the phone i've got a very busy day i'm talking to four different clinics today uh, about their problems a couple are uh checking us out a couple are clients and uh gonna be working on our own practice as well so got a really really busy day so i'll only be able to send you one of these today but enjoy have a wonderful day folks and uh, we will talk to you tomorrow